Hi everybody, uh, it's Ethan here. Uh, today we are going to talk about CocoaPods, which is the de facto dependency manager for iOS and macOS 10. Uh, now that it supports Swift, it's a real possibility for me. Uh, whereas before it only supported uh, Objective-C. So we start off by going to CocoaPods.org and you get this page. Okay. And you scroll down a bit and you see three options install. That's what we want. All right. So what we what we find out is uh, CocoaPods uses Ruby uh, to install. It's a it's a Ruby gem. Uh, now macOS comes with Ruby installed by default, but it's an older version of Ruby. So as it says just above that command line, uh, it says you have to use sudo to get uh, root access to install the gem. Now. I use RBENV, RBEN, RBEN, whatever you want to call it, uh, to run multiple versions of Ruby. So that's why you'll see that on, on my screen that I'm running a, new, a newer version and I don't have to use sudo. So great, uh, gem installed CocoaPods and installed. Now, how do we get started? Get started, okay, so that's a sample pod file. Uh, that contains dependencies, but it has a pod init command. So pod init, all right. And we have a pod file. All right, let's see what's in it. Okay, so this has our two targets that are defined in my project, Evernote memory and Evernote memory tests. Great, and it has one uncommented line about the platform that I'm targeting. I'm gonna uncomment that because I'm gonna be targeting iOS 8. I'm also gonna use use frameworks which is something new with the iOS 8 and uh, the new Xcode. What this does, apparently, according to the CocoaPod site, is uh, allows you to use dynamic libraries, dynamic frameworks with your code. And this is due to Apple's change in policy, where with Swift, they don't ship the, the libraries, the standard libraries, with the OS. So you have to bundle them together. Uh, they, and they don't let you uh, create static libraries with Swift in them. So you have to basically use dynamic libraries if you're using Swift. And I'm not uh, quite clear on all of the implications of this uh, reading through the site uh, just because I'm so new to Swift and, and the iOS uh, ecosystem. But it seems like you, it's an all or nothing approach at the moment uh, and uh, this might not work for everybody. So now I go to the search capability on CocoaPods.org and look for my Evernote API that I, that I need. All right, there it is. Uh, and they have a handy dandy copy to clipboard button that copies the pod description that you can just paste into your pod file. That's pretty handy. All right, so I go back and open my pod file. Now I could put it in Evernote memory and maybe that's a good idea. Uh, I did this a little bit before I started getting really deep into development, so maybe this will turn out to be a bad idea, but I put it above it so it so it's actually included in both targets. All right, so go back to search. I've also been thinking about using Realm uh, for local storage, uh, which I've been reading a little bit about. Uh, looks like it's a lot easier than uh, core data, at least uh, for my limited time, time frame that I've got for this, so I'm gonna add Realm too. Just for giggles, I may not end up needing it, in which case I'll remove it. But then we go pod install and wait for it. Oh no, we run into a problem. Okay, so after a little bit of Googling, I, this is what I found. So that is because something's borked about the, the repo that it has set up. So the solution is to do pod repo remove master and then do pod setup and then, which, it, which restores the master repo for CocoaPods, and then you do pod install. And here, that, that did it for me, it worked. And now it says that I have to restart Xcode uh, using the XC workspace that CocoaPods sets up, which is not originally there. So this is, this is a good uh, point to make that you can't just double click on the Xcode project now that you're using pod files. And, uh, and Cocoa Pods. You actually have to go and open, you can see here we have the XC, works, XC workspace, 
now, and so I open that. All right, and Xcode launches. Hooray! You can see the problem here. I uh, I actually had Xcode already open, so it's saying, "Oh, there's a workspace integrity because it's already open," and you're trying to so. Basically, the solution there was to quit Xcode and use the open Xcode workspace again. No big deal there. Uh, stay tuned for my next screencast. Hopefully you found this one useful. Hopefully you'll find the next one too. Thanks.